2020 campaign spending by Trump and Biden. Most expensive ever. The 2020 presidential election has been one for the books in more ways than most of us care to imagine. From record early voting that reached over 100 million votes, the highest voter turnout in recorded U.S. history, and claims of potential election fraud from an incumbent president and a challenger to become the oldest president ever, and yet here's another record that was broken this election cycle. It's none other than the campaign spending, which almost reached $14 billion. If this leaves you feeling intrigued or surprised, keep watching as we uncover how campaign funding works in the US, how it's regulated, and how the two campaigns were able to cover the bill. The numbers will make your jaw drop, and if you're curious as to how the American Electoral College system works, you're gonna wanna stick around until the end. But before we get started, remember to hit the like, subscribe, and tick the bell icon so you don't miss any controversial political happenings and other surprisingly interesting topics about the world we live in. How does campaign funding work in America? All democracies have some level of control over how much money campaigns can raise and spend in order to balance the odds for all candidates. In the case of the United States, federal-level elections like the race for the presidency and Congress are controlled by the Federal Election Commission in order to enforce electoral law. This law sets a series of limits around how much each candidate or political party can receive in donations, and how much money individuals or organizations can donate to their preferred candidate or party. For example, an individual can only donate up to $2,800 per election to a candidate's committee and up to $35,000 per year to a national party committee like the National Republican Party Committee or the National Democratic Party Committee. But if you're wondering how the heck did the Trump and Biden campaigns amass a combined $14 billion from all these small contributions, the answer is simple. They didn't. You see, when it comes to campaign funding, there is a loophole that many consider as legalized campaign money laundering or next level lobbying. We'll get to that in a minute, so don't skip a beat and turn up the volume on your speakers and pay attention as it gets interesting. The Political Action Committees, or the PACs. Suppose we wanted to help our favorite candidates in the elections by raising money for their campaign. We could do that by organizing fundraisers, collecting the donations from individuals, and then donating the proceeds to the party committee or to the candidates. If we did this, our organization would be considered a political action committee, or PAC, and we would be limited to a maximum contribution of $5,000 to be spent directly on the campaign, which means that we alone wouldn't make much of a dent, so we would need many, many PACs to raise any substantial amount of money. Ah, uh, if only there was a way to bypass this annoying little limit so that corporations and unions were able to really influence elections. Wait, here's a thought. Let's create a cooler breed of PACs, and we'll call them, wait for it, the Super PACs. In 2010, a pair of PACs who wanted to donate more money for their candidates took their cases to court, and as a result, a new type of organization called Independent Expenditure-Only Committees were created. They were allowed to receive unlimited contributions from just about anyone, including corporations, unions, wealthy individuals, you name it. The only condition was that none of that money could be either donated directly to campaign committees or candidates, nor be used to expressively advocate for or against any particular candidate or party. They could only spend their money independently from the official campaign committee, on things like polling, voter registration drives, and advertising, as long as neither side coordinated with the other. Of course, people always find a way to make things work to their advantage, so super PACs and political parties eventually devised ways to overcome these controls, and they now contribute to the gross of campaign spending, allowing billions of dollars to be amassed from a small group of rich or famous people. In the 2020 election cycle in particular, they pulled out all the stops and broke all the records, as you're about to find out. Record spending in the 2020 election. 
In early October, many independent analysts were already calling this election the most expensive in history, while they estimated that a total of $11 billion would be spent by November. Even they were surprised when the combined amount reached a staggering, record-breaking $14 billion, twice that of the 2016 election, which had set a new record back then. It seems that campaign spending will only get higher and higher in the coming years. But how exactly was all that money split up? For starters, not all of it was destined to the presidential race. A little over half of it, $7 billion to be precise, was spent for the congressional race, while close to $6.6 .6 billion went to either presidential candidate. When it comes to political parties, Democrats managed to raise almost twice of what Republicans raised, raking in around $8.7 billion, while the latter managed a not-so-meager sum of around $4.9 billion. Of all that money that went to financing Trump's and Biden's campaigns, each candidate managed to single-handedly raise roughly $1 billion. But where did all that money come from? Who invested so heavily in either campaign? Keep watching to see how donations were distributed according to industry so we can get a good idea of who's supporting who. Then we'll check out who are the high rollers behind each campaign. Let's have a closer look, shall we? Where did Trump's donations come from? When it comes to Trump's donors, the bulk of his campaign money comes from the real estate and the securities and investing industries. Even so, only the real estate industry invested more in Trump's campaign than in Biden's. Of all employees in many different industries, only donors from the NYPD and the U.S. military leaned significantly towards the president, with only a few of them contributing to his competitor. However, we can also find many famous names that coughed up quite a bit of cash for Trump. Some examples include Hollywood real estate guru Jeffrey Palmer, who raised $6.4 million for Trump in September. Other donors include Vince McMahon from the WWE and his wife Linda McMahon, who pitched in more than $2.7 million. Several billionaires have also done their part, including J. Joe and Marlene Ricketts from TD Ameritrade, $1.05 million, Andrew Beal from the banking and real estate industry, $1.04 million, and Dennis and Phyllis Washington from the construction and mining industry, $1 million, just to name a few. What about Biden's donations? Biden raised almost twice of what Trump did in this election cycle. He received donations from thousands of workers from different universities, as well as from tech companies like Amazon, Google, and Apple. However, Biden's big backers are also a healthy group of billionaires that include Tom Steyer and Kat Taylor, who donated almost $700,000 to Biden's campaign. Facebook's Dustin Moskovitz and Carrie Tuna, $830,000, Jim and Marilyn Simons, $1.1 million, and LinkedIn's Reid Hoffman and Michelle Yee, $2 million. But the real high rollers for Biden were Donald Sussman from Paloma Partners, $9 million, James Simons from Euclidean Capital, $7 million, Deborah Simon, $4.6 million, and George Marcus from Marcus and Millichap Company, $4 million. From Hollywood, world-famous director Steven Spielberg and his wife, Kate Capshaw, pitched in with $2.5 million. After seeing these numbers, it's no wonder the campaigns reached a combined nearly $14 billion. And with everything that's in stake, it's good that they did. Regardless of which side we root for, one thing is certain. This presidential race has been one of the most unique, controversial, and at the same time inspiring elections that have been held in the USA. And all the money put into advertisement, polling, and voter registration paid off in the end because it impelled nearly everyone to exercise the right to choose our nation's leaders. However flawed our democracy may be in the eyes of others, the fact is that it's ours and it works for us. There will always be a winning party and a losing party in every election, but as long as the American people are heard and every single vote taken into account, America will always win. What do you make of all this? Do you think that the system put in place to raise funds for campaigns is fair, or do you think they're too biased towards the rich and powerful? 
Leave your thoughts in the comments section below and remember to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell while you're at it. Also, if you'd like to better understand how the American democracy works, check out this video that's popping up on your screen, where we give you a crash course on the electoral college system from its creation all the way to the present day. Until then, thanks for watching.